So it seems like magic, food from the air, maybe even manna from heaven. We're talking about a drone delivery service. Uber Eats in the air, get your food piping hot in just three minutes. No, it's not marketing hype. There is an actual drone delivery service operating today in Galway, Ireland. It's called Mana, and we're chatting with the CEO, Bobby Healy. Welcome, Bobby. Nice to be here. Great to have you. Give us the lowdown. What is the service? What do you do? Yeah, so we're we're a delivery service using drones. We deliver everything from everywhere to everyone in suburban communities. We're based in between Ireland and the UK, and it really is simple principle, right? Carry things around the last mile, or in our case, three to five miles, and very very quickly as the crow flies, and and essentially totally disrupt the last mile, changing economics for food delivery companies, for restaurants, for pharmacies. You name it, we're we're flying it in their town now in Galway, as you said, just over 10,000 people. You know, not just the economics, but also the usability, right? I don't get my pizza delivered because I like it super piping hot. And so I am always showing up at the pizza parlor and getting it as it comes out and taking it home, right? Because I know that the deliveries, they do five or six deliveries and I might be last and it may not be super hot, but you got three minutes there. Now you said as the crow flies, but these drones are seriously fast. It might be more like the eagle flying. Yeah, or sparrow hawk, more common in Ireland. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, when you can get products to consumers in, as we do, our, our median flight time in Galway is two minutes, 40 seconds. Wow. So that means from takeoff to the landing the product on your doorstep, it, it's two minutes, 40 seconds. So we, we only need to think about prep time and, and getting the product loaded onto the aircraft as the as that random number, right, that you, you know, that you are uncomfortable with or a lot of consumers, you know, if they're using food delivery by road, they, they think, yeah, it might be 20 minutes, might be an hour though. And I might be batched. I might be in the box with three other people's meals and my driver might be waiting for my hamburger and fries, you know, outside the restaurant. All of that goes away with point to point drone delivery. It's just so much more efficient. Um, and it's simply because of the advantage that it has, obviously, but we're delivering coffees, you know, we're delivering burgers and fries, we're delivering ice cream, broccoli, melon, you name it, we're delivering it and it arrives perfect. You know, pipe in hot coffee, foam intact, little design on top of the, of the foam still intact. And that's viable, it's viable at scale, it's far cheaper to do and it uses far less people to do than using the road. Well, let's talk about these drones then. Uh, are they custom drones or did you make them yourself? Did you buy them off the shelf? How fast are they and what capacity do they have? Yeah, so yeah, we, we design them. We actually have, uh, we have two different types of drone now. Uh, so we design them and we build them. They're aviation grade drones, which means, you know, it's a fancy way of saying they're extremely safe. So, you know, we've flown 45,000 flights now. We're now doing two or 3,000 test flights a week. We're flying 100 deliveries a day. And it's not your typical drone, so it, it's not the fastest. So we, we top out at about 50 miles an hour. And that's perfectly fast when you're you know going in a straight line. Um, but it's designed for safety, right? So it's got three flight computers. It's got three of everything, three compass, three GPS, three LIDARs, everything on it. There's three of. And any one of those stacks can fly the aircraft on its own. So you, you don't you forget about how cool looking the aircraft looks or how fast or, or any of those things don't matter because at scale, we need to be flying between one and 10 million flights a day at scale. That's the type of volume that we need to be thinking about. And you don't do that with an off the shelf, you know, drone, you know, DJI or one of those guys. They're beautiful, fantastic drones, but you couldn't use them at scale. Amazing. Um, you remind me of Arthur C. Clarke. The Ramans always did things in three, right? Um, so <laughs> perfect. Well, there's an argument that says two flight computers is more than enough, right? But you don't know each flight computer doesn't know which one is crazy, right? Um, and yeah. there's three though, it's a vote. And that's the way aviation works, right? You have three and you know the anomaly by measuring the other two, right? So you can't do it with two. Wow. Now, what about, do you have control software for these? Are these remotely piloted? Are they autonomous? Uh, what's the situation there? 
Yeah, no, they're fully autonomous. Um, so when they, so, so the process is we get the order, the order gets processed, the, the restaurant or the partner hands us a bag with a QR code on it. Our team scan that QR code, uh, the system tells them which aircraft to load on. The, the, the product goes into a kind of a cassette thing, which is a, it's a big box, which is also the battery. We load it on the aircraft and stand back and, and everything else, the aircraft comes back after having delivered with no intervention whatsoever. So fully autonomous. And it takes us about 30 to 60 seconds to turn around the aircraft. So we get about seven or eight deliveries per hour, per aircraft, I should say. And the process is the aircraft goes straight up in the air with the cargo. It goes more or less in a straight line to your home. When we get there, so when you order, we essentially let you drop a pin to say, where would you like the product dropped? And we'll use, we'll use combination computer vision and people to verify that pin drop. And once we're happy with that, that's, that's your registered delivery address. So the aircraft goes about 150 feet to 200 feet to your home. When it gets there, it'll start to descend and it'll start to scan using LIDAR and radar to make sure everything's cool underneath. We need a two meter diameter inanimate flat space to land on or, or to deliver. <laughs> you won't yeah, get it into my hand, in other words. <laughs> yeah, no, we could, we could, um, we, but we don't. Like it's, it's super accurate. So like we use RTK, GPS, LIDAR and radar, fuse them as we're going down. So we're absolutely on the dime when we deliver. And we've delivered on top of cars, on top of trampolines, all sorts of things. So like I said, flat and inanimate, it's all we need. And people have asked us to deliver into crazy, stupid places to try and trick us. Uh, <laughs> you know, so, so it's really interesting. So the, the real difficult problem to solve is one that you wouldn't think of. So, so all that is autonomous, right? And the nice thing about autonomous in the air is that you err on the side of safety always. So if you don't understand the environment, unlike autonomous vehicles where you have to you know, have perception, you have to understand in order because you're forced to make a decision. Yeah. When you're in the air, you're not, right? So if you don't understand what's happening or you're, or the software doesn't understand or there's, a, there's an anomaly of any type, you just go home. You know, you just literally retrace your footsteps using gyros and accelerometers to reverse what you just did. And that works super safe. Yeah. And so, so it's much, it sounds strange, but it's much easier to have autonomous aircraft than autonomous cars. That is really interesting because, of course, you're navigating a 3D space versus a 2D space, so it seems more difficult in that scenario, but you have safe places to go up to. Do you have a human pilot sort of standing by that can say, oh, you know, the, the software can put up its hand and say, hey, I've got an issue, and a human pilot can kind of figure it out? Yeah, so it's event-driven. So one, one of our pilots, it's, it's all centralized, so the aircraft has twin LTE modems on it, so it has three connections, three operator connections. And so we have, says if something happens that the aircraft can't understand, so let's say it, it completely loses its GPS, so for whatever reason, like GPS jamming, something like that, which is a thing, by the way, then our pilot will get a notification. They don't fly the aircraft. They, they can't, you know, it would never be viable to fly an aircraft reliably uh, at distance like that. So the pilot can do certain things. So they can deploy a parachute, they can land the aircraft in situ, or they can tell it to go home or to a mm -hmm. rally point. Mm -hmm. so, so what I mean by rally point is when the aircraft takes off and flies, it's got its flight path, but along that flight path, we have pre-programmed rally points that in the event of, let's say the main battery dies or we lose more than one motor, anything that means that it's too, too risky to come home, we just go to rally points. And a, and a rally point could be a flat roof somewhere that's safe mm -hmm. that we know is clear or can be vegetation trees bushes you name it so so that's the pilot can make those decisions but mm -hmm. can't really control the aircraft that's that's not viable at scale but certainly from a safety perspective it works really well well this certainly seems like the future and it's super interesting and it's amazing i mean you order your food three minutes later uh there it arrives piping hot the drone drops it down from the sky you take it inside you eat that's all wonderful and good. Now you're in one spot in Galway, Ireland. You're doing lots of tests elsewhere. You just raised $25 million from a variety of venture capitalists. What's the vision here? Talk us out two, three years. How, where are you? Um, how, are, how are you going to expand this so that I can do it in my home near Vancouver, Canada, and somebody else can do it in San Francisco, and somebody in Azerbaijan can do it? 
Canada actually will be getting it sooner rather than later. Um, very forward thinking regulator in Canada. So, so the way we look at it is the platform's not ready for scale yet. We're not a million miles away, but we want to get this perfect. Um, so that means half a million flights, something like that, uneventful flights as we call them. Um, when, when we do that, we're, we feel we're ready to scale, we're safe to scale, and also we have an efficient operation. So our plan is we have another town now that we're going to in Ireland of about 40,000 people. We're going to aim to do between 500 and 1,000 deliveries a day in that town. And that lets us kind of stretch our legs. It lets us just, you know, we're doing 100 deliveries a day now. So, you know, five to 10 times that is a nice, you know, uh, order magnitude more, not more complex, but more difficult. So we feel that we do that town of 40,000 and we're happy with it, then we'll roll out across Ireland all of next year, which is addressable, about a million people we'll, we'll try to deliver to across next year. And then, um, again, you know, obviously you can hear from my accent, I'm Irish, right? I happen to be in Ireland. We have no, you know, we have absolute ambitions to roll this out across the entire world, including the USA. Um, but Europe will be the first region mm -hmm. To scale and the reason is quite simply there's half a billion people here and we have regulatory framework that's very very clear both in requirements on companies like us and on timeline so for example we, we already got our european wide license from yasa the, the european regulator so what we're doing in ireland now in theory we could roll that out across europe and um, but we're not ready and 25 million dollars ain't gonna power a rollout across europe so um so so but definitely start of 23 we'll be really going throttle up we'll have raised hopefully our series b or or bigger and we will be intending to roll out across multiple european markets i can't say and um, the usa is the one obviously we think about the most it's by far the biggest market for what we do and um, but it's difficult to see uh, when or, or what the timeline looks like there it's just a more complex regulatory market and um, it might be it might catch up with or even overtake europe um, or it might be behind either way our platform you're going to see drone delivery as normal as, as riding a bike across europe over the coming maturing in the coming five years what's it look like to open up a new market um do you send drones around mapping the area from from the sky and building up sort of a 3d map of the space and knowing where there's safe spots and all that stuff what's that look like yeah that's exactly what we do in fact we send up drones and we do a high-res uh, lidar map of the of the area and that takes us a couple of days um and that, that map essentially gives us our elevations and our objects in, in that area that we're flying over. Nice thing about it is it respects people's privacy because obviously it's LIDAR, it's point cloud, there's nothing discernible of a private nature. And again, that, that's a massive topic, a delicate topic for what we're doing. So, so we scan the area with LIDAR, that gives us a really, really nice way to identify where, where is there a gigantic antenna, uh, where is there vegetation and you know all these all these things that we like to know about now we're usually high enough to avoid you know antennas or or power lines all that stuff so that we don't have to know where they are but it's more for emergency handling we like to know where all the trees are mm -hmm. and trees are are great objects to hit if you need to if you have an emergency and we like to know where the water is things like that and um, but we still we'll, we'll classify everything but we still there's still a human element to it where we'll still, you know, get out there in cars, drive around, looking at the space. And but it's not, it doesn't take long. So, so if I take a town of 50, 100,000 people, I wouldn't expect it to take more than a week or two to be when once we pick our location, week or two to put the infrastructure in. We have some comms on their radio comms for short range stuff. You know, and we have some RTKs or base stations for our location tents for the aircraft. Other than that, um, it's rock and roll. And, you know, we it's viral product, right? So we only have to put a sticker, you know, on the front of a store to say, next time you come by, why don't you order drone delivery? And bang, <laughs> everyone in the town is stampeding to our website to get the thing, right? It's because it's, it's such a circus that 
it, it's viral. So it's not, we don't have this slow burn of, you know, let's introduce it and, and push and market and all that stuff. It, it literally, it's overnight. So that's good and bad. You know, we, yeah. we have to be very ready for that because it, we don't want to disappoint everyone when we switch on because we have a certain amount of throughput. And the way we look at it is what's the normal run rate for 100,000 people? Well, we know what that looks like with today's, you know, food delivery, right? We know penetration rates, we know repeat rates. So, so we know what those numbers look like. But if you introduce three minute delivery and it's delivering into your back garden or your, or your lawn or whatever, there's no people involved. It's, it's lightning fast and ultra reliable. Literally, you're going to know within the second when, when once your food is prepped, you're going to get a notification saying we were there in two minutes, 52 seconds mm -hmm. and we are rarely late. Right. So that changes things. It's not, it's not just a circus. It's not just entertaining. And, um, but you can now rely on getting things around and that changes commerce in a, in a community. So like uh, the, the local bookstore in, in Galway where we're operating, they've got a better offer to their customers than Amazon have already. And this is the West Coast of Ireland, right? Yes. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> same day delivery. <laughs> or same yeah. minute delivery. <laughs> yeah. Well, see, the thing is, think about it, right? So it's physical goods now are can be digital storefronts for any vendor, right? So that think about what that does for, for communities, for local businesses, all of that, right? That mm -hmm. that's one thing. And then the second part is what would you do if you had if as a consumer, how would you behave? right what would change it's no longer i want a pizza i'm prepared to wait 20 minutes and then i start to get angry it's now literally everything within five miles is reachable in less than five minutes i can literally buy it and it arrives in less than five minutes so what happens is as we see people are ordering coffee and croissants every single day in this town and it's no longer for the excitement of seeing a drone showing up it's because they get beautiful hot coffee with a beautiful fresh pastry instead of going to the coffee shop. We've had orders for broccoli, for melon, for nappy cream, for books, mobile phone. We have a deal with Samsung where we're delivering for the Samsung store online and we're delivering mobile phones to people. Like in what world would that happen? Um, so, so it's just, we don't know in the end what normal will go to, but we know that normal will be a big, uptick in demand for online purchasing. What's really interesting to me in all this is that you're you're moving fast, you're doing something very, very cool, but you're also operating within the regulatory framework as we already talked about. And that's interesting because we have the historical precedence of like an Uber, which would just come in like the typical mm -hmm. bull in a China shop and just barge into markets and there you go. And we're, we're bringing this in. <laughs> don't care what regulations you have, don't care what it looks like. You're doing this carefully and you have to, of course, because you're in the air, but you're also doing it in a way that then becomes scalable really quickly because you have regulatory yeah. compliance. Yeah. That's really interesting to see. It's, you know, the, the, that's absolutely a fact. And um, there's a number of things to that. Right? One is we'd be arrested in this case. It wouldn't be, it's not the kind of thing where you get into an argument with counsel. They just arrest you because it's the air. And um, so, so even if I wanted to be Travis, I couldn't be. Um, but the other part is actually, and, and this is often lost, and certainly with, with the BC community, is we need to be the best citizen mm -hmm. that there is in terms of doing business. Because when we bring this product into a community of you know, 50, 100,000 people, we should respect that that is their airspace. And while we're making money out of it, you know, we, we are bringing them a lot while we're doing it, but we can't just assume that everybody there is absolutely delighted to see us flying through their airspace. And we, we, we have to respect that there's differences, right? Even though most people want us, there are people that don't. Mm -hmm. um, so you don't, you don't force this down communities next. You go in, uh, I won't say in a consultative way, but in a respectful way. Mm -hmm. And that means following the law, following regulations, but for example, noise regulations, we respect them and we make sure that we're never over whatever the per permitted limit is. Privacy, we have no recording equipment whatsoever. We have no customer data whatsoever. You know, all of these things roll up together to say, you don't get to roll out this type of business without having government and local population on your side. So mm -hmm. not an option. Maybe let's end here. 
how did you get into this space and why did this interest you particularly? Yeah, so I, I, I live five miles outside of Dublin, Dublin city center, uh, Dublin's population of just a million and a half people, pretty big town um, or small city. And like I said, I'm five miles outside in Ireland and in, in Dublin, we have Uber Eats, we have Deliveroo and we have Just Eat. So three big food delivery platforms, none of them come to my house. And I only live five miles outside the city centre. And my the suburb that I live in is about 40,000 people here. That's 40,000 people that have to drive down to the shop to get their bag of chips or, you know, their, their pharmacy or all these things. And, and even more so, the local shops, the local stores, they're not viable. It's not viable to do delivery for a local restaurant. It's just mm -hmm. cost too much. So I'm sitting in my back garden, a couple of glasses of wine. You know, I'm Irish. Uh, so I said that my option is to either get in my car and drive with a couple of glasses of wine on me, or it's to do without the product or wait an hour for some guy, you know, to show up my house, probably with COVID all over his hands. You know, it's not a good experience. It's a, it's demand looking for a solution. And at, at the same, so, so that's one thing, right? Is an, an actual personal need for, you know, a problem solved. And then the other is I'm a, I'm a technology guy. This is not my first rodeo. I've built a ton of tech businesses. I also know that as it happens, that there's a confluence of various different technologies that have matured and, and that enable and, or make viable this, this whole craziness of flying low value products around communities, right? So battery technology, machine vision, GPUs, motors, all of these tech carbon fiber, you know, forming, all of these techs have kind of suddenly come of age. And if you join them all up, you end up with a, you know, 30, 40 pound aircraft that can carry around six or seven pounds of cargo and do it for an absolute fraction of the cost of using the road. So, so you, you join those two dots together, you say there's a $300 billion industry that's, that's suffering terribly from cost economics. And here's a technology that can turbocharge it and fix its economics. It's exciting. And it's, a, you know, we think it's a trillion dollar industry. It's a nascent trillion dollar industry that there's nearly nobody uh, with a solution. So we're racing to get there. It's incredibly exciting. You brought up an interesting point. So I'm going to ask a further question here. What's the cost of drone delivery versus uh, traditional road based delivery? Is it a 10 X? What, what, what difference? What's the difference? Yeah, so that's that's a really easy one to answer, right? So uh, with today's industry in the suburbs, a typical person can do 1.8 to 2.5 deliveries per hour, right? So that's that's the throughput. And that person, whatever they're paid, if they're paid $10, $15, whatever it is, you know, divide the cost of that person per hour by that. And in, in the USA today, it's costing between six and nine dollars base cost to a platform to, to move product, right? To get product from restaurant to the store or to the house, right? So think that key KPI, one person, roughly two orders per hour. One mana personnel can do 20 deliveries per hour. Simple, simple number, right? So our cost is one tenth the cost of using the road. It's literally that simple. And we're doing that today, by the way. This isn't, you know, something like self-driving cars that one day will be great or, you know, autonomous air taxis that one day when the battery equation works will be great. We're doing this right now today, very busy day in Galway where we're operating and we're doing that today. Awesome. So yeah, so like it's just shockingly efficient and real. And it's, I often am amazed at how excited people are about mobility or autonomous driving or autonomous air taxis when actually right in front of everyone's noses is a trillion dollar industry that's being born as we speak. And you said it's a holiday weekend right now in Ireland, so uh, everybody's ordering their holiday goodies, their barbecue stuff, their uh, maybe the wine, who knows. Uh, thank you so much for taking this time on your holiday weekend, Bobby. Really appreciate it. Very cool service, and I look forward to drone delivery here in near Vancouver, Canada very soon. Thank you very much.